There we go. Okay. Well, good morning and welcome again. Now we are recording. <laughs> I feel like a TV news <laughs> person. So, so just a reminder that we have um, QA sessions before and after the academy. This the, the, the time there is uh, Oslo time UTC plus one. Please join for uh, for the issue for sharing your issues or learning from others. So reminders. Please check your attendance. Remember to mark your attendance. Uh, also, I think Martin said today that the attendance remains open 24 hours. So if you watch the session later, you can also mark your attendance and get that 10%. It's not cheating as long as you have watched the session. Please share your feedback. We do learn from your feedback and we try to improve based on your feedback. So please dedicate two minutes to the feedback before leaving the session. We will remind you today, end of day, before closing. And then uh, remember that on Friday, we have a session for sharing, for networking, <clears throat> for all of you to connect and talk to each other. And we are asking uh, the participants. OK, thank you, Martin. 23 hours from now, no, 12 hours from now, OK for the attendance, you can still check your attendance. So Friday, we have a session for, 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 I'm very distracted. We have a session for sharing experiences. We have a session for networking. For now, we have uh, one participant. We have Bridget from uh, South Africa, who has volunteered to present us the, sorry, Sierra Leone, the Sierra Leone implementation. We are very, very uh, excited to, to see that and to learn from that implementation. Um, we would like to have more people sharing your projects. So please send us a message or an email. So Slack, email here, anywhere. In any case, we will open microphones and, and, and ask you for your projects, but we think it's better if you can prepare a bit and, and have a, a slot there. Please don't be shy. We want to know from you. Um, we will. We would like to follow up afterwards and after the academy. So it's good if we know what are you doing on your projects. So now the recap from yesterday. Uh, we talked about program rules, visual configurations, visual data entry. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you liked it. And um, and uh, I, I didn't talk about the um, feedback. Sorry. So I want to share that. Uh, First of all, we have seen that you, ha you have started uh, supporting each other. You answer questions uh, in, the, in the groups, in the breakout uh, Zoom, in the breakout rooms, you were helping each other. So we think that's great. We want to encourage to keep doing it on Slack. If you see a question from a colleague that you know the answer, go ahead and answer. Sometimes we are not enough uh, people to answer all questions. We try to, but, or sometimes we are slow. So. Don't uh, don't worry. I mean, don't hesitate on answering the questions from your colleagues, making suggestions if you have faced the same problem. So that's very welcome. We are very happy, and actually, thank you for doing that. So we have got some comments on the feedback uh, that we go too fast. Yes, sorry. This is the issue of having the academy condensed in three hours a day. We try to compensate with materials, recordings interactive sessions that uh, we, we will evaluate at the end of the session and decide if this uh, at the end of the academy, if this has to be longer, we will try to change the format based on your feedback. But for now, we keep trying to compensate with, with um, documentation and, and materials. Um, we have asked for examples of program rules. We have been asked. We invite you to explore your student program has a lot of examples that work. So please explore the configuration, explore the effect in the app, change them, break them. You also have the description in the metadata file. So that was the purpose of, of giving you that. We hope you can explore them there. Uh, we have been also asked by step-by-step -step uh, slides in the presentations. We are doing a demo uh, in which we almost reproduce the exercise and that is recorded. So we really hope you can uh, have a look at that uh, because uh, the, the materials are not prepared as a tutorial itself, are prepared as a support for a presentation. So 
we hope uh, by watching the recording and seeing the materials, it helps. And um, we have been asked to have an experience sharing a networking session. That's Friday. Please join on Friday. Please share your project. We are going to do that on Friday. And uh, we will try to explain better the exercises. We have been told to explain them better. So we will try to make it better today. And uh, we have been also suggested to follow a different approach, like all sessions before and then all exercises. That's actually not recommended for online courses. They have to be interactive. They have to be, um, yeah, interactive is the word, and dynamic. So that's why we are combining everything. We give you short theory, exercise theory, exercise, uh, just to keep your brains connected and interested with our session. So again, at the end of the academy, we will evaluate with the academy team. They, they, they see this academy and they see all other online academies. So slowly, slowly, we are getting better in this uh, new digital world. Oh, Jaime, I didn't see this. That's great. So Slack, it's working well. Great. We have 1,246 messages. Great. So following up the exercises, we are a bit low in submissions. We have started grading, so you will get your, your results during today and tomorrow for the ones submitted already. Uh, please submit your exercises. Please let us know if you cannot submit your exercises or if you have any issues because, uh, yeah, we are still missing 30 people from day one, uh, 40 average from day two, so please, please, Submit your exercises. We want to grade them. And then I think this is the one from yesterday. Let's see how do we end up the day today. Um, but yeah, we have uh, East and West Africa kind of leading <laughs> the process. I think this is Uganda and, and Rwanda. Is it Jaime? And is this uh, Sierra Leone? I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit bad in. Uh, uh -huh. And, and uh, so who, who is here? It's uh, Nigeria, no? Nigeria. In Nigeria, because the, the dot is a bit big. But yeah. They, I okay. mean, they conquered the server. The server now is green. And with the Nigerian flag, I think, or at least it was like this yesterday. OK. Of course, they are. Very good, very good. So just a wrap up for today. Not a wrap up, an intro for today. We are going to see program indicators. We are gonna see, Jose will, will present maps, everything about maps uh, for yeah, everything, two sessions about uh, geospatial representations, and then we will see the data sets. So first and last sessions for today are very simple, I think. The ones in the middle are a bit more complex, but um, I think you will like them. So um, before starting, um, that's, that's all. And um, and I don't know where anyone with uh, Jaime. Do you usually make questions rounds in this? Bas cinco minutos tarde. Okay, I'm five minutes late. That's what Jaime wants to tell me. So no, no questions. I, mean, I think we should okay. go straight away because uh, yeah, let's start. Okay. And if you have questions, we can use breaks or the Jaime, Jaime is always uh, you know stressing me. Sorry, time. So. I think we have had issues with the submission. Sorry, Jaime, I'm gonna take two more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the interface is a bit special. So I think if you go to today assignments, some people say, I only see one exercise. You have to navigate the top bar for seeing the other exercises program rules, visual configuration, visual data entry, you can also use the arrows. And we can start now. And what time do I have to finish? Uh, okay. okay, so 
<clears throat> program indicators and legends in DHIS2. What are we going to learn in this session? We assume you know program indicators, as we as we said uh, in the well, as we have been doing during all these sessions. We want to show you how uh, to display the program indicators in the app and uh, which ones will be or will make sense actually to be displayed. Um, so it's 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 really it should be fairly simple. Okay, now it looks good. So program indicators. Which program indicators uh, are displayed in the app with uh, yeah with the uh, right information? Uh, we display or we use the indicators in the domain of the tracked entity instance. Talking about tracker. Um, so what does that mean? It means that the indicator can be calculated with the data of the tracked entity instance in this enrollment. What's an example of an indicator? Where? Okay. Martha, you, you dropped for, for two seconds. Okay. Ones that uh, are in the domain of a tracked entity instance, so can be calculated with the values from the enrollment. One example: uh, a weight gain of a of a patient, or or um, yeah, the weight gain of a patient. How is the the child growing? Uh, what would not make sense uh, in the app? The at this moment, the average weight gain of all patients in my program. That cannot be calculated in the domain of one enrollment, right? So, so those ones are what we call program level program indicators. So we are not using those ones. We are focusing in the TEI and the enrollment. So where are the indicators displayed and how to display them? Uh, as you know already, in the track entity instance dashboard, we have um, four tabs. So there is one tab called indicators. Your indicators will be displayed there. And for the indicators to come or to appear in that section, you need to tick them as display in form in the program indicator uh, maintenance configuration. I will demo this in a minute, so don't worry. So what is and is not available? Um, usually aggregation types do not make sense because they make sense when we grow up in the hierarchy. And again, we are in the domain of the tracked entity instance. This is information for the health worker looking at the tracked entity instance. But the, the last value, if you are using a data element that is repeated in different stages, you can use last value and that will work. Like last value of uh, blood pressure. I don't know. That is checked regularly. Uh, then all data elements and constants are supported. Now we are talking about when you create the indicator. Uh, variables, there are four that are not supported. This is all documented uh, in the same document that we have been uh, recommending these days. Or unit count, program stage ID, program stage name, and sync date are not available. I don't know if Victor is in the call, but please jump if not correct. Uh, this is from the documentation. Then all functions and D2 functions, you can use them. They, they will all work except the relationship count function. And the analytic period boundaries just do not uh, make sense in the domain of, uh, of one enrollment. So they will not apply. Now, I don't know if you have paid attention that to this, that this uh, value is colored in green. This one has no color. So how do we do that? We do that with the legends. The legends are also rendered in the Android app. You can find them under maintenance others. Uh, I'm going to demo this in a minute, so no problem. No, don't worry. And uh, I will also explain you why we need to pay attention to the boundaries and expected values. Um, so this is all, actually, for indicators. It's very simple because we understand that you can create program indicators. We are just trying to show you how to display them in the app. So for that, uh, we can we can go to the app. 
So let me share the app. Sorry, I should have been ready, but because of the previous session, my account is not going. I'm putting them on mode before I'm sharing. Sorry about this, just one minute. Okay. Nope. Mm. I am zero zero one. Yes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> What's the flag now? Al Sudan? Was it South Sudan? I, I don't recognize the flag. I think it was South Sudan. Um, Okay, so I want to open my student program. You see you have some more programs today. That's for the sessions uh, for maps. But I'm going to open our known program. I'm going to open one track entity instance. I want to go to indicators and we don't have indicators. Okay, so let's have a look in the server. The first thing I want you to have a look, uh, sorry, is the legend. So we go to others, legends. We have already created a legend for you that you will use, all of us will use the same legend, but let's explore it together. This legend uh, accepts three values because we have created an indicator that we will see in a minute that evaluates the risk of a patient that has been exposed to COVID. So we say we have three risk levels, one, two, three, being three, the highest risk. Um, and and so why what did what did I want you to know about the boundaries right now? Uh, and we are fixing this for the next version. The Android app is a bit confused when we get a value in uh, <clears throat> in one of the of the actual uh, boundary. And DHIS two uh, does not sorry how to say DHIS two does not, uh, if we say here one and here 1.1, so that the Android app is not confused, DHIS2 legends are confused. They need the same end, uh, end point and the same starting point for their periods. Otherwise, it, the, the UI will tell you there are gaps and this is not correct. So that's fine. You just need to know what you're doing. In this case, I know my, indica my indicator will always have uh, numeric values like integers. So I know it will never be 1.1. So now one will be allocated here and two will be allocated here and there is no comp comp problem. We are gonna fix this so that they are always inclusive, but uh, for now it's, it's how it works. So this is the legend risk level COVID-19 with three values. I have assigned three colors and uh, you are welcome to explore and create legends. So the next step is to go to the program indicator. So program indicator. I'm gonna work in the one for my program, but you have the indicator already in your program. I'm explaining the exercise actually already. So this is the indicator. I open the indicator and there are two steps that you have to do. 
I'm going to mark as display in form, which is already there. So I probably didn't undo on my practice. And then assign a risk level legend. So your legend, you will find it like this. So you need to display in form, assign the legend and save. So when you come now to the app and sync, which I should not need because it was already there. Not yet. 10.40, 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, I didn't show you, but you can explore, but the, 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 <laughs> the expression is a bit of a, uh, it's a nested Boolean expression with the two condition. So that's why we don't ask you to create it, but it's actually checking if, if it's high level risk, if not medium level risk, if not uh, lower level risk. We have configured this uh, and you will find it already done, but you are welcome to play as long as it, you have the same result. So this information is here. I need to enter values in the exposure risk. So if the patient is a health worker, even if he's not visiting or exposed to a positive case, I think someone has been playing with the legend because this should be red, but that's okay. I actually was confused when we checked. This should be red. I'm going to change it for the exercise, but right now what is happening is correct. But this was not right. So for you, it will be okay. One should be red. This is a high risk. If we change his exposure or her exposure, because there, there are three, three options. Eh? Healthcare is a healthcare worker, which means high risk, has visited a healthcare facility 14 days prior to symptoms upset, on, onset, that would be a medium risk, and has been in contact uh, with a confirmed case in the last 14 days, that would be high risk. And no risk will be like the three are no. And you have to answer to the three of them. This is how we have configured the program indicator. So the three of them need to have a value. So now this should be a low risk. And the medium risk would be that the patient visited the facility but it's not a healthcare worker and is not has not been in contact with a um, positive case. And I just want you not to be confused if you don't see the indicator, because when the indicators have no values or nothing to add, they are not displayed. So if there is, if the expression doesn't return any value, the indicator will not display. So I see a raised hand, Eric, uh, one sec. Let's, let's open the exercise so that we can leave it in the screen for you. But actually that's the exercise. You need to find your program indicator, the risk level for your program, assign the legend that now it will be, red will be high risk and green will be low risk and make sure it's displayed in the Android app. And you need to submit two screenshots, one with, uh, with two different values. We just want to know that the legend works. So time for the exercise. I'm gonna leave this, uh, this, this in the screen. You're, you're seeing my screen, right? All these things. Yes, your screen. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm gonna leave this slide in the, 
in the screen and let's uh, let's try to to address the the questions okay so hi everyone good morning afternoon or uh or evening so yeah i'm jose garcia that uh, the the Gandhi team working more in the in the technical part of the product um yeah i'm ready to to go through the geospatial considerations. So let me then uh, share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So, so this session is to talk about, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to discuss how we can like record, uh, uh, how we can collect resources in, using the app that has a GPS coordinates on it. So basically in the HS2, we have like, uh, like five kinds of resources uh, that can have, that can contain GPS coordinates, right? So one is the track identity instances, the enrollment, the events, uh, data element and attributes, and then uh, your units. Well, there are six that I'm going to use and not units. So uh, within the app, uh, we can like collect uh, also all this information within, within the app. Okay. And we're going to go through the process that the configuration that we need to have in the, in the server in order to collect data, GPS coordinates at the track identity instance level or events or that or uh, enrollments as well. Um, so let's get started. How, what are the kind of uh, coordinates that we can collect? So basically we have two uh, that are polygons and points. You know, in polygons we can like uh, collect like uh, an area uh, that is normally is very useful for when we need to uh, have like a, a, an investigation of a particular disease in a particular area or uh, like in this case, like in the COVID related, what are if there are like kind of COVID uh, areas, okay? So in this case, uh, polygons only applies to TIs, enrollment, and events. Okay, while the points apply to the rest of the of the of the resources. Okay, so this is the kind of uh, the the two type of coordinates that we can that we can collect with with our mobile app. Um, so for the track identity instances, how we can set up like uh, the configuration in the server. So then. Uh, in a way, in a way that then we can collect the, the we can link uh, GPS coordinates to a track identity instance. So here we need to go to the to the track identity type. In this case, uh, the track identity type that we are working through all the course, so, so the academy is the person, okay. And then there is a field that is feature type, which is uh, which which can which can have this kind these values: non value, uh, point, and polygon, okay. So uh, in this case, if we just want to select a point, we need to, yeah, so it's going to display like here, uh, the coordinates for a point and a polygon, then we need to go, uh, you know, to to, uh, uh, to click like uh, in several points of, of a map. Eh? We're going to see, to see how in a moment. So then this is the, the, the screenshot. Uh, this is the screen that when we are creating a, a, a track identity instance will display. So we see here that uh, these are the coordinates for the person. Again, because we, we have here marked the, the, track, the, the feature type of the track identity type as a point. So we can like, uh, let me, we can like then uh, collect the, this as, a, as my current location. Okay, in the case I, I click on this image over here. Okay, and I can, or I can send, the, or I can select the location in a map. So if I click here, it will show up like a, a map running on Mapbox, and then I will just, I can just zoom in or zoom out and just uh, select any coordinates there in, in the map, okay? So, I mean, what is the use case? For example, the use case of this is that we have also in, in our uh, in our COVID case is the, in our COVID use case is where the, does the person live, okay? So here I can, I can record where the location where the person is living. So also we can have uh, the, uh, coordinates at the enrollment level. In this case, we need to go to the to the tracker program, uh, and then in the in the enrollment details. Uh, sorry, this should be enrollment details. Then in enrollment details, uh, we have also the feature type, and we we can select again the point or polygon, and then uh, it will be rendering like this. Okay, instead of the the coordinates of a person, it will enroll, it, it will show the, the enrollment coordinates. 
So there are not much difference in the Android app if right now if you are collecting GPS at the track identity level or the enrollment level, but this is maybe important in the in the in the server size because then you can run different kind of analysis and you can use different kind of layers in the in the map hub of the server. Okay. So for the for the exercise today, we are going to use the, just the track identity entity uh, instances coordinates, but you need to know that the enrollment can also have coordinates. Okay, okay. Then, Okay. Sorry. Uh, some people are saying that they can hear you a bit low. For me, it's fine. But if anyone else, can you please, well, Jose, can you talk a bit with the microphone a bit closer? For me, it's fine. But maybe some people are having tensions. Okay. It's better now? Uh, please reply on Slack. They cannot talk here. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. So um, then the events. Uh, here for the events, we need to go to the, to the, uh, uh, the stage details. Of the, of the program stage. And also uh, then there is a, a feature type field. Uh, here we can select also the, the, the type of coordinates that we would like to, to display. Um, this works for events that belong to a tracker program or events for a single event, for a single event program, okay? With no registration. Okay, and then uh, when, whenever I create an event, it will show up, it will be displayed here. As, again, as I can, it can be the current location or, or can open a, a map. Okay, and then we can have uh, we can have data element and attributes. In this case, I need to define the data element or an attribute with the value type as coordinate. Uh, and for example, uh, we can some examples that I've been working on in the past is uh, I can like, have a program stage that is a travel uh, where the patient that tries to record where the patient has traveled to, and then I can have like a, a like a data element to to record that to collect that information, the GPS point of the of the travels of the person. Okay, um, it works the same for attributes and data elements. And data elements need to belong to a program stage and attribute needs to belong to, to, a, to an enrollment. And last, the last one is the org unit attribute. Uh, in this case, uh, also you know that they, of course, the org units also can have GPS coordinates. And then we can use a, a, an attribute or a data element, uh, which, uh, which value type is, is, is an org unit. And then uh, during the enrollment or the event process of entering data in an event, it will show like a, like a it will display like a, um, the org unit tree of your search uh, org unit, okay? So in this case, in mind that you will have to collect the, the location of the patient instead of having of being a GPS coordinate, you uh, you are recording, for example, you are collecting the, the villages of a country as sort units. So then it will display like, uh, in this case, the Sierra Leone uh, hierarchy level with the country, the districts, the chief dooms and the facilities. And you can like uh, select level by level. Okay, and remember what is important here is to keep in mind that this works for uh, the search or units. Okay, it will take the search or unit uh, tree. And yeah, th that's it for the for collection. Uh, so I'm going to run now like a quick example. Uh, There's something that you need to do in your exercise as well. So let me just take the, my mobile now. One moment. Okay, so here, this is the, um, well, I think that first thing is, sorry, maybe uh, let me show you first a bit the, the, the program here, maintenance. So this is the program that we are, uh, that we are using for the exercise, contact registration and follow up. So in this case, uh, we um, we are using this program just to collect uh, data that are persons who who may be in contact with a, with a COVID positive cases. Okay. Um, so if if again, if I go for example to the track identity type, if I go here to the person, I can see that the feature type of the person is point. Okay. That's the reason because then I can collect now the the, the GPS. GPS point for, for the track identity instances. Okay, so if I open then the the, um, the program here, uh, contact registration and follow up. Okay, so I can see that the, uh, the track identity types is persons. The enrollments, I don't have the, the, the feature type in the enrollment. So you see, non value. 
Okay, no feature type here because I, again I call it in GPS coordinates at the track identity type level. And then, well, these are the attributes, nothing new. And then the the the, the program stages here. The content information is where uh, this stage it will like uh, show up where the the um, the content has happened with the with the person and the positive COVID the index positive COVID case. Okay. And in this case, also we have here the, the, the feature type as point. So basically in this program, we can collect we can collect GPS coordinates at the track identity instance level and the and then the, the at the event level. Okay. So now let me go through the through the application itself. Um, okay, so this is a program here. Okay, I click on it. Okay, and let's say that I just want to, to add a new uh, contact. So uh, I am here typing uh, Jose Luis. Okay, search for it. So I click on the on the plus here. Okay, and then these are the, the, the coordinates. And so click, click. If I click here, it will it will show my current location. But if I click on the map, it will show it will show a map. Okay, so um, so let's say that I am here. Let me here. Click on accept. Okay, and then I can collect then some other attributes. The like for example the image. So I can take a picture of myself right now. And this is something that you need to do in your exercise. Okay, here we go. What? I click there. Okay, and I can uh, mail, continue with this. Well, I, I think not, I don't need, I can say that I am like a friend of the, of the, of the in this case. Okay, and then, uh, Okay, so now this is in terms of like collecting data, right? Um, let me go back to my, pre to my presentation. Okay, but then, uh, so how we can visualize coordinates in DHS2? Okay, so for, for visualizing coordinates, uh, uh, once that we have collected coordinates, we, we have like, so, uh, like we can display all those coordinates in a map. Uh, but in this case, so far we have uh, in this version, we can show like track identity instance in a map, we can show enrollments, we can show events. We cannot show data elements or attribute yet, okay? This is going to be ready in 2.4, uh, in next version to be published in, in April 2021. Under units, we cannot see the, the yet we cannot, we, we are not able to, uh, to see the boundaries of our units or, or points for, for our units, okay? Maybe uh, this can be ready. Well, I don't know, it's in the roadmap, but we, we still uh, don't know when this can be ready. So um, so the way that this is working, and again, I'm going through the demo. Uh, so showing here the... Okay, let me run this. It's taking a little bit to load. It's taking a bit. Sometimes. Okay, here we are. Okay, so in this case, as uh, all these track identity instances has GPS coordinates associated to them, so I can click on these three buttons over here. Okay, and, I, 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 and then I can show them in a map. This option only exists, only is being presented to the user if the TIs has GPS coordinates linked to them, or in the track identity instance, or in the enrollment, or in the events. Okay, so I show this in a map. Okay, and then this is all the pictures that we have uh, with all the uh, with all the TIs that have been recorded. Okay, so 
You can see here this carousel. You can move through this carousel. Okay, and you can like uh, select uh, any of them, and it will like uh, it will like open the the PI here for you. Okay, so within the map, you can also of course like uh, search, perform any search. So you can select then female, sample, and it will show only the only the the, the female PIs. Um, okay, let me just. This. Okay, what is important uh, is also the map layers. Okay, in the map layers, we can like uh, change the, the base map. Uh, so we have also satellite view. So if I click the satellite view, you can apply. So this will render, uh, this will change the, the base map. Okay, we can also show this. Um, uh, we have the heat map, a heat map layer. So this is useful in the case that you have like many, many uh, COVID cases in, so you can like zoom out a little bit and you can see how the different areas is trying to collapse. Okay. And, and then, uh, as I said before, we can also render in the enrollment. So we have, even if we don't have enrollment PI for en coordinates for enrollments, we have the options here. So if I click this option, I, I will, this will show up the, the a map with taking into consideration the, the, the coordinates for the enrollments, but also the, 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 um, the events. So GPS for the events, in this case, for this particular program, the, the, the contact information is a program stage. So I can click here on apply. Okay, and let me just remove also the, the coordinates. Okay, so this is the, the coordinates of the events that I have. Okay, and I also can, can, can move through them and I can see the events if I click on, the, on this card over here. Okay, I can combine different layers as well. So if I, I can show up like the coordinates as well and with the satellite view, if I want. Okay, now, yes. Okay, so now in the map we are like showing like all together. Okay, so it's also, it's also possible. And, and then we have like a other map layers, but this is probably we can explain this better in the in the um, in the next session about relationships because then we can also display relationships in maps. Okay, but I think that we can like a, we can go through this like in the in the next session. Okay, so I think that's all for 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 maps. So let me then go back to. To my presentation, um, I don't know how I'm doing with the time. Okay, hang on. you have ten minutes left. Okay, so um, yeah, with with the presentation, that's it. And then uh, uh, maybe we can go through the exercise now. Okay, so let me open this one. So what you have to do is very simple, I would say. Um, so. Within this exercise, you, you are going to be able to know how to add coordinates to a tracked NPT instance. Okay, the same that I have done. Uh, how to visualize GPS coordinates in the, in, the, in the application and how to use different map layers. So basically what I have done in the last 15 minutes. So what we are asking for you to do is like, uh, you have access to this, to this program as well. Okay, the, the contact tracing registration. So you have to enter three cases. Uh, within your country, maybe in your country city, with, with different locations. Okay, uh, so in the, the program is a contact registration and follow up. Okay, and then what you have to do is like add a picture uh, to the image attribute. Okay, so you know that we have an image attribute. You you can like select a picture that you have in your phone previously collected, or you can take a picture of yourself the same way as I have done. Okay, and then it will be rendering in in the map and in the and as the profile of the of the ti as well okay visualize your case in a map okay and, and uh, once that you are able to sync to to visualize your, your cases you can sync also your cases within this with, with the server okay and exercise what you need to do then for the exercise uh, this are, we are we are asking you to to submit four screenshots 
okay, so three of them with the uh, uh, with the map map screenshot showing the the three TI cards in the carousel. Okay, so you have to select. You're going to uh, add three TIs. One is going to be one card. Uh, so you have to select one card and see and 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 see where the card is in the uh, so show where the TI is in the map. Okay, so you have to do this per card. And then the others trying to combine all together. So play a little bit with uh, zoom out and zoom up on the of the map view and try to have like a, all the TIs you have created in the, in the same screen. Okay. Jose, so, can you can you maybe share the screen again with the device and explain what do you mean with the yes. three screenshots of the map showing the TIs? Yes. Okay, so let me uh, show just this. Okay, so I'm saying that uh, you are going to create three three TIs. So it's one a picture with the one picture per TI, like in this case this TI with this the with this image over here. So then you move to the next one. In this case is Jaime Bosque. Okay, next one, Victor. Okay, so three images, one image, uh, one screenshot per TI, and then you have to just zoom zoom out a little bit so so you can see all the all the all the TIs in the in the same screenshot. In the same Perfect. Screen. I think it's clear now. Thank you. Okay. Let's see if there are questions. Uh, so, uh, Jose, we had a question in, in Slack. Uh, I told them to wait until the, the this time of the exercises. Uh, I'm going to read it out loud so everyone here is aware. But uh, Dere was asking, what is the difference between no value and known in feature type? I think that there are no difference in, in the reality. Yeah. I would say the same. I think it's just uh, by default, it's no value, which means none, right? Yeah. So if it is none, you cannot collect any any coordinates uh, anyway. So yeah. There is another question from Bridget. Are we able to download a map from Android, or is it only visualization? So far, it's visualization, but then with map box. Um, it's possible also, uh, but I don't know if it is working now, to what extent. Um, so yeah, if, if you if you are online and then you, you are rendering a map when you're online and then you move to offline, it should be, the map should be there. Yes, if so Bridget, maybe you can give us some details on which kind of download you mean. Because the map will work if you go offline, but uh, we don't, know if you mean like extracting or something like that. Uh, George Maguire was also asking if we are supposed to use the same program. And I replied there, but for you all to know, yes, please use the share program. This has been created because later on, when everything is there as sync, we hope that we will show a very beautiful map showing all the TIs that you have created. But yes, this, this program was created, so you're supposed to use the share one. The contact tracing. There is another question for Jose. Uh, so Amza is saying, I did not get well the difference between point and polygon for the TI or event. Okay, so. And we have, sorry, so that we do it both together, Jose. Tiwong is asking on program stage, there is feature type polygon. How does that work? So maybe some refresh <laughs> on polygons. Yeah, so, so basically a polygon, uh, a GPS point, you have to select just um, just a point in the map. So you have to click on a map or your current location, uh, okay, with a latitude and longitude. In a polygon, you need to, uh, is a, you need to define like several coordinates. You need to mark several coordinates and then it will show up, a, it will show up an area. 
Okay. Maybe I can show an example because we have created other program in the in, in the server that, that deal with polygons. So let me let me go through this. This is quite advanced stuff now, but um, so there is a, a, a this I have created this program that you also have access to, COVID area. Okay, this is a program just to to yeah, the purpose of this program is just a matter of uh, adding COVID areas to the to the to the picture of the programs. So um, for example, I have I can like uh, okay, let me create a new one. So in this case, you see the coordinate for the area is polygon. Okay, so if there is a polygon, it will only show a, a map icon here because, of course, you cannot render in a in a polygon your current location. Okay, because you are in a latitude and longitude. So you click in the map, and then you can like just start to to click on the map, and it will start to display an area. Okay, when you are done, you click on Asset. Okay, and then uh, you will have an area instead of a point. And then you can display this in a, so in fact, if, okay, let me save it. In fact, if you go now to, the, to this program and then you, you show in a map, you can see it like a, You can see like different polygons that I have just created. Okay, and for this, remember that uh, what you need to do is that you need to go to the or even the the if you want to to get to collect this um, uh, this information at the event level. So you 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 have to do this here uh, in the in the feature type of the event. In the, of the program stage, mark it as a polygon. If it is in the track identity type, you have to go to the track identity type. So let me do that. So in this case, I created an area track identity type, and the feature type of that, of that track identity type is, is polygon. Okay. We have, uh, I think, more questions. Um, so it was asked again about the submissions, so maybe before closing, we can repeat that. Okay. Okay, one error that Jaime is looking at. Another confirmation that we are using the contact registration program, yes. Um, George was asking, contact registration and follow-up feature type is blank. It should be point. So I checked the program, Jose, and it's point in the enrollment details. So I'm not sure where George is looking at. Hopefully it's fine. Then Robert. Uh, is point in the enrollment? I, I, yes, I think that I, I remove it. It shouldn't be. It's, it's pointing the in the enrollment that. In okay, it shouldn't the... be. So maybe I save it when I was doing now the presentation. Be? It's in the no, enrollment it... details. It's a point. Yeah, but they are collecting data in at the track identity type level, not the enrollment. Ah, level. okay. Then this one is point. So do I change it? Yeah. So well, the you track change identity... it. I don't want to touch. You change it. Sorry. Okay. So it's a track identity type person which is the feature type is point. Okay. If we have both, if we have the track identity type as point and enrollment as point, then it, it, it will be kind of weird within the data entry because they, they will see like two, the two different GPS, two different fields for the, for the GPS, uh, for storing a GPS coordinates in the same screen. So. Okay, then do you change the program, Jose, because it was a point? Yes, I changed the program, yes. So, Brian, yes, we are using the contact registration and follow-up program, yes. 
And Enzo is saying he's getting a lot of 500 errors when he tries to sync, which might be similar to the problems for Chamika. And I don't know if we have anyone monitoring. Can we use same picture for the three TI? Well, you can, but it would look better if you or I, but yes, you can. It will not be incorrect. Okay. You can yeah, take different, can different angles. Yes, Jose? I am. I'm checking the errors on the server. Uh, it seems mm -hmm. that Samika, Rose, and Enzo are having the same. I'm trying to see what's going on. Yeah, it's happening to me as well. Now with the TI that has created. I think this is related to the picture. I don't know. Okay, let me register one. Yeah, whenever I try to post that, yeah, it's sending me 15 errors. I'm getting the 500s as well. I'm, I'm checking also from, from my device and the server. So I, I, I'm gonna try to troubleshoot. If you're getting these errors, please be patient. We will, I mean, it's fine as long as you keep recording on the device. At one point, you will be able to push them to the server and should be, should be fine. Yeah, at the end for the exercise, uh, you just need to, to, again, you just need to uh, submit three, four screenshots. Okay. So we're going to start to what is going on in the server and then what, when we, a solution for that, we we'll let you know, and so you can synchronize with the server your device. But you don't need to synchronize with the server for the exercise. Yeah. So can you, sorry, Jose, can you explain again the submission? Yeah. So um, what you need to do is like you need in this program in the in the contact registration and follow up program, you need to enter three cases, okay, three COVID cases, so sorry, three persons. Uh, you need to add them also a picture, okay? So there is an attribute that is, uh, which feature type is an image. So you need, for that attribute, you need to collect a picture that can be a photo that you take at the moment, the same that uh, as I did before, or can be a, a, an image that is, has, is, already, is already in the phone, okay? Then, uh, then when you have created the three, the three TIs, okay, you, you need to visualize uh, those guys in a map. Okay, so then what what you need to do is like uh, four screenshots. Okay, one per TI. So let me change. Let me go through the again through the through the map here. Okay, so one per TI that you that you have created. So you you see the cards here and the the TI. Okay, 
then you go to the next one that you have created. So other screenshot, in this case, hi, Jaime, and then other screenshot. Okay, so three screenshot, 148. And then the last one, you need to zoom out a bit and try to have, try to display all the all the TIs uh, in the same screen, and then you take a, a screenshot of all this. Okay, it's clear now. Jose, there, there are two questions in the, in the Slack channel. Uh, I can take the second one. And one second. Okay. Yes. So the question says, can you add coordinates to an option set? For instance, if you have defined towns or villages as an option, and then you want to map based on the option selected, what would be the best way, the best way to handle defining city, town, village for a tracker program to be able to map results? So I think this is a very good question and it's something the ESA is to is working towards being able to respond. Right now, uh, if your hierarchy has the city, towns, or villages as part of the hierarchy, I would suggest you to use the org unit value type for the data element. So Jose talked about it in the presentation. Uh, you configure your data element as or unit value type, and then it will offer to the user the hierarchy. And if you have the, the org units mapped with the right uh, locations, then you will be able to display in the map, uh, the, um, in, the, in general in the HIS2, in the maps app, in the web, you will be able to display the, 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 the data elements or attributes of type org unit in the map. In the app, you will be able to do this in the next version released in April to display the points that correspond to org units that has been captured, have been captured as data elements or attributes. The limitation there is aggregating based on those org units and not on the capture org unit. But that's that's on the roadmap, and but that needs to be this. If for further information, I, I would suggest we go to the community and check with the team analytics. But now for the origin of your question about the option set. So meaning I imagine you don't have that the level of detail that you want to collect for the locations in the hierarchy for some reason. I might be wrong, but I tried this uh, sometime back, Jose, correct me. And I don't think there is a direct way to link an option in an option set with a coordinate. Yeah, there is no, uh, this is a, a common problem that, uh, that yeah, many implementation has when they are like, oh, yeah. the, 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 sometimes it's like they, they you know, they, they have like 10,000 villages, 20,000 villages. So and they are not in the hierarchy. Yeah, and they are not yeah. in the hierarchy, so. So that's, uh, there is, some people use work, not work rounds, but like, the, the thing is you, you, you can find ways, but to display it in the map, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit challenging. And there is another question, Jose, from Robert. A TI enrollment for catchment area and travel history data capture. Would it be also possible to pick the location coordinates from the entity's residence address and specify travel destination respectively. I think dealing with coordinates, zooming and mapping, changing map layers can be cumbersome. So I'm not really understanding the question, Robert. I don't know, Jose, if you want to read it in case you yeah, understand yeah, it better. In the question. So for travel history data capture, what we normally do is we have a program stage that can be repeatable. Uh, that's one option. Uh, and then in that program stage, you have a data element that is type of GPS coordinates. So if the person was traveling to, I don't know, four different areas, so you can have like four events and then uh, uh, with the event date, that event date means that, for example, where the page, where the person, when the person went there, and then uh, at that time of GPS coordinates that can show up the, at the time or, or, the, or the event coordinates as well, that can show where, uh, where the patient, in about where the patient was. 
I think it's normally how we are dealing with our history. Jose, I thought the break was at 11.30, but the break was at 11.20. Thank you, Jaime. Okay, so what should we do? Should I then start with, with relationships? Uh, I would suggest that it's, it's super interesting all the questions that we're getting. If you don't mind, keep them for the last session we're having where we have question and answers, because if not, the extension can be too too much for these sessions that are supposed to be super short. I would suggest that we give a four minutes break till 35, and then we start at 35 with five minutes delay, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. And we're going to check the server on the meanwhile. So please be here at the Okay. Okay, so we continue now with the, with the relationships. Uh, and then at the same time, we're troubleshooting the server and see what is going on. Um, okay, let me share my screen again. Uh, So I believe you can you can see my screen now. Um, so uh, let's get started then. So relationships. Uh, well, as you know, uh, since 231 to 32, the relationships has been completely changed in the in the in the server side. So now we have like a, you can define relationship types uh, that link that can link. Uh, events with enrollments, events with PIs, uh, enrollment with enrollments. Okay, so now in the server, and we are going to see this in a moment, we can like define uh, several relationship types with different resources, okay? PIs, enrollments, or, or, or events. Uh, in the app right now, in this version 2.3, we only, uh, the, our domain is going to be only between track identity instances, okay? So this means that if you are like, for example, uh, uh, you know, defining a relationship type between a, an event and a PI, right now, this is not going to work in the app. Okay? We plan to have that, uh, we, we plan to have this uh, uh, relationship between events and enrollments for the next version, and the version we will see. But in the current version, 2.3, uh, we are the domain, our domain is the track identity only, okay? Also, uh, there are no constraints uh, of any program. This means that, for example, you can like a, um, you can build a relationship between TIs that belong to different programs. It's not a problem. Uh, there are no constraints regarding their units. You can create a relationship between between uh, track identity instances that has been enrolled in different NOR units. And also, there are no constraints. And this is one is very important. Uh, there are no, no constraints of track identity types. This means that you can like, um, you can create relationships which uh, track identity type is different. For example, we can like, uh, as we saw in the exercise before, we can like uh, create a relationship between a person and an area if we want, okay? In this case are two different track identity types, person and area that belongs to two different programs. Okay, so uh, if we want to visualize the, the, the relationships of, of a particular track identity instance, we have to go to, the, to, to this tab over here, relationships, and this is what is being rendering then. So in this case, Jaime Bosque uh, uh, has like, for example, a relationship with, with Jose Garcia Muñoz, with me, and with Marta Vila. Okay, so we can see here, the, the, this is the, and we're going to see how we configure this in the server in a moment. This is the, the label for the relationship, and this is the, the, the track identity instance that uh, Jaime is linked to. So Jose Garcia Muñoz and, and, and Marta Vila. Okay. We can also uh, navigate the relationships and remove the relationships. Okay. If we go to this clip, if we click on the if we click on the clip, yes, then uh, we can we go to this screen uh, that gives us information about the the about Jose Garcia Muñoz, some, some of my data, um, and, the, and then the, the, the programs that, that Jose is enrolled to, okay? Um, so then how, how we define this, this in the server? Okay. 
and this is work uh, this is working this way till 233 plus we are now as you know we are running 234 now okay so most of the relationships that you're going to create uh, are going to be bidirectional this means that if you have a relationship between so normal if Jaime Bosch is in contact with Jose, then Jose is also in contact with Jaime. So we can navigate the relationship uh, in, in the both sides. Okay. And then what we need to define uh, in the in the server is the the, the which is the the, um, the type of the relationship. In this case, we again we we only this is only work for track identity instances. So this is what we need to 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 add in the in the in the server. We need to mark that this is bidirectional, and this is the label that appears. Okay, this person has been in contact with this person has been in contact with. Regardless, where from where we are starting the relationship, this is going to be labeled uh, as, as the same with the same text. Okay, and so basically, the, the relationship types you you have to define this in the in the or the maintenance program relationship type. Okay. And we are going to see this in a moment. And always don't forget the same settings. Uh, this happens to me. This happens to everyone when when people the relationship types also has same settings. So by default, if you are not a, a super user, the same settings that you are creating probably are going to see private. Okay, that means that no one but you can see the relationship or can like create a relationship. So, so don't forget the same settings if you need to create a relationship type. Okay. And then uh, if you need to create more relationships for a particular track identity instance, it's a matter of going to this, going to this, uh, to this tab over here and there is a button. Uh, you, click to click in, you, have, you have to click on the button and, and, and uh, click on the relationship type that you would like to add to this particular PI. Again, we can have as many relationship types as we want. Okay, there are no a, a limitation. There is no limitation for this. Okay, so I think this is like, um, it's going to be more easier easier if we show this in a demo. So then let me again, uh, go through my Android device. Okay, we are again in the in the in the contact registration and follow up. Okay, and the use case here is like there may be like a, a you know an index COVID case. And then, for example, in my that uh, Jaime was having a hosting a, an illegal party at his home. And then uh, we went there, everyone went there, and then we, we, we got COVID and, uh, at that part. Okay. So then Jaime could, will be the, 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 uh, the index case. Okay. So I am opening my, my program over here. I'm selecting Jaime, the card, Jaime. Okay. If I go to relationships, then I can see this, this relationship over here. Okay. That I have, that I have already created. So I can remove them. Uh, like for example, I was I want to remove Marta Vila, so I click on the on the red icon over here. So and it's, it it will remove it. So I can navigate if I, I just want to go to to Jose Garcia Muñoz. So I have to click here on the clip. Okay, and it will show the the the. Um, my information, the information of my API with the with the programs that I am enrolled to. Okay, so I have to I can click on the program and I can I can navigate my TI as usual. Okay. But let's go back. Okay, let's go back to Jaime. Okay, what happened if I if I want to add a a, a new relationship here? Like uh, I remove Marta, but what happened if I want to add her again? So I have to click on the plus. Okay. And these are the, the now the because I define in like, like other other relationship type that we're going to see this in a moment in the server side. Okay, so I have to click on the has been in contact with. Then. Okay, and this is work as, as usual. So as the relationship type is between TIs and person, the targeted type person is being shared across different programs. Then here on the top, I have to select the program. Uh, that the, the person is registered. In this case, it's contact registration and follow up. Okay, so here I have my DTIs again. And then if I want to add Marta again as my, as my contact, so I just select Marta and then it is added here. Okay, again. So other thing that I can do is just, um, I can click on the plus button again 
and this happens many times because uh, in main that then you don't have the person registered in, 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 in your mobile, okay? But you know that, uh, okay, maybe there is other person, John Smith, that is not in the in the in in my device, but has been also contacted by Jaime. So I can look for John Smith. Imagine that you have like, in this case, we only have five, but imagine that we have like, I don't know, like hundreds of, of PIs. So I can, I can try to ask for John. Okay, we don't have any John here, but we can create as well a John from the, from the relationship as well. So I click on the plus. So select this. Okay, and I'm going to, well, at this point, um, this is John Smith. Uh, mail. Okay, I'm not going to enter in the data here. Things are complete. Okay, and now if I'm going to to again to the relationship that hi, that hi, that Jaime has, I can see that uh, that John John Smith has been added. So basically, from this tab, we can like add relationship. For, uh, of TIs that already exist in my device, or I can that already exist in the server, or I can create a new a new a, a new TI from here as well if it is not in the server or in the on the or in the device. Okay. Uh, last, what I can do as well is like uh, you see here this button over here that is the map, so I can show also relationship. I can show in a map what is the if this again if this person has GPS coordinates that they have. I can show them in a map as well with the relationship created. So I click on the on the map over here. Okay. And I can see the information. Okay, so this is Jaime. And you can see now that you can also navigate the relationships. Jose has been in contact with Jaime. Marta Villa has been in contact with Jaime. John has been in contact with Jaime. Okay, and this is the this is in this case. That we have here. Okay, um, so how we can define this in the in the server side? Uh, so then let's go back to the server then. So in the server again, we need to go to, through maintenance. Well, I need to load the system again. Okay, and then maintenance program and then relationship type. Okay, and we are using this one, has been in contact with. So this is a name. I have to mark that this is bidirectional, so I can navigate from both sides of the of the of the uh, of the relationship. And this is going to be important also for analytics in the server side, because if it is bidirectional, I can like use, you know, uh, I can count. TIs in both sides as well. How many how many TIs has been caught up with Jaime? How many TIs has been caught up with Jose? Both sides of the relationship will work for, for analysis as well. Okay, but what is important is this. From constraint here, you have the multiple options, as you know, uh, but uh, as we explained before, remember that we need to select always the track identity instance if we want to have this working for Android. Okay, the track identity type, person, and then the program. Okay, in this case, the from and the where are the same, from person to person, okay? But then we can, as I said before, uh, we can be more creative and uh, we can like, have, like for example, uh, this other relationship belongs to, uh, to the area. Okay, and in this case, let, let me open this one. Okay, this is also bidirectional, but then the track identity instances here are different. One is the, the track entity, the track entity type is an area and belongs to this program. And then this, the, the, the last part of the relationship is a person, a track entity type person that belongs to this program. Okay, so in this case, we are combining uh, different track entity types and different programs. This is also, this also works, okay? What is important is this should be a track entity instance in both, in both parts. Again, for this version, next version in 2.4 and 2.5, hopefully we, we, we are also supporting and run the events over here. Okay, so that's the reason because now uh, I can also, if I go back to my mobile, 
Okay, I can also navigate, for example, the, the areas. And I can say, like, for example, uh, this rural area. I can go to relationships. And I can see that already contains like uh, some people over here. And I can display this in a map as well. OK, so then I can see that the, the Pablo, this TI here, belongs to this, to, this, to this area. And I can navigate, and Victor too, I can navigate I can navigate the cases through, through, the, through the area. Okay. And also, uh, what I would say it's really, it's really cool, but we have now kind of a, a bug in the, in, the, in, the, in the app that we're going to solve. Uh, but also we can, as we said before, uh, in, the, in the previous session, what we can do is that, uh, um, what is the best way of doing this? We can like show this in the polygons in this case in the okay as a map in this case we show polygons okay I have three polygons and then I can go to map layers and also I can I can render relationships so the map layers I have again I can change the base map to to satellite views. I can show enrollment coordinates, I can show event coordinates, uh, I can show the heat map layer, but also I can show relationships in this map as well. So if I click belong to the area, also will show the relationships here. Okay, so you can see basically it is like in the map, you can see like you can see information about different targeted types, different targeted instances, and how do, do uh, how you can render it all together. Uh, and you will be able to render it all together, okay, in the map. But now uh, there is kind of, this kind of bug is still on the beta version, but hopefully for, uh, we're going to provide a, a bug fix for this in the, in the next Android release, okay? When we are like uh, showing the TIs, showing the relationships in the, like in a global map. Um, okay, so that's all for the explanation and then the exercise. What do you need to do? So let me let me go through this. So basically, the goal is now how to define relationship types to be rendered in Android. That we have that we have seen how to do this in the in the server side. Uh, we are going to understand how to we can add relationship between TIs between TIs in this case of the same type of, of the same track entity type and how to render how to show the relationships in a in, in a map okay so what you need to do is like uh, the three cases that you have created in the previous session okay so you need to open the the the, the program the contact registration and follow-up program and create two relationships okay you will have uh, you have to, of those three cases that you have created you have to set one as the index case and then you have the the, to create two relationships between the other two cases and the in this case, okay? Same as I have done with, with Jaime. So in this case, in my case, my example, Jaime was in this case. And then uh, you need to visualize your relationships in the map. Okay. Unfortunately, till we got the problems of the server solved, we cannot sync with the server, okay? But uh, it doesn't matter for the exercise, it's okay? Because for the exercise, what you need to do is, I think it's very simple is, just submit one screenshot of the map showing the relationship that you have created. Okay, so that map should show like, a, yeah, two relationships and three TIs. Okay, so let me show you again with my, in my mobile. So basically you need to go to the contract station follow-up here. Okay, and you have to, to determine what is your index case. In this case, it is Jaime Bosque. And then in the relationships, you see, uh, you will see, you have to create two relationships within this case, and then display those in a map. And the screenshot that I am asking you to submit is this one. Okay. So that's all for me on my side. I don't know if there are any questions. So we had some questions in the in the chat. I told them to wait till the exercises. Uh, we can read them now. 
if we don't have time, we will be replying to them in the question and answer session happening at one. But we have, I'm going to go from up to bottom, but please, if I miss something, let me know. Um, okay, can, can a program rule set the value for a coordinate of a T attribute? Well, uh, yes, I guess so. Yes, because at the end it's having like a... I have never done that. Uh, I don't know if Marta or Jaime, you have experience doing this, but in theory, yes, because at the end it's having like a value to, a, to, a, to, a, to an attribute. So I guess that, yes. I, I have not... Uh, sorry, I have my camera off. I have not tried either, but as you're saying, I think it should work. Uh, we can test. Uh, this question was by Peter Ricketts. Uh, Peter, if you actually have tried or you want to try it, please feel free to do it and, and let us know. We will also be trying on, on our side just to see, but I think there should be no problem. Yeah. Uh, there's another question from Peter as well, who says, can you define a relationship to show resource, sorry, to show source to contact? This would be useful visualizing contact tracing. Okay. Source to contact. I mean, this is... If I understand this, your question properly, this is uh, more or less what we have here. Um, right in this case, we can see that uh, this is the, the index case over here. And there are like uh, these three cases are, um, are linked to that in this case. Okay, so it's a matter of, and then there are no limitation regarding the number of resources that you can have. So maybe this, this TI is also related to other TI that is here. It is, it is not a problem. Um, yeah, but this is more or less what we can do in, in, the, in the map for contact tracing. Yeah, Peter is fine, yes, but this is bidirectional. So I guess he means to have only one direction. Yes. Which I don't think it's... would apply in this case, but... Uh... Yeah, at, so you have to then in the server, uh, if you go to the... This one, so you have to um, amark this. Okay, so normally, in, I mean, in, so all the normally all the relationship types that I have created in the past are always be directional. But yes, if you don't need it, you have to you can un uncheck this. Yeah. Can I just make a comment on the previous question that I tried, but I was mute. Uh, can a program rule set the value for coordinate of a TEI attribute? Um, I don't know. So the answer is what Jose said. I think so. We have not tried. So please, if you try, let us know. But I'm just thinking, shouldn't this, linking with your previous question, Peter, about uh, assigning coordinates to the options of an option set? I think it's... Uh, complex configuration, but uh, you just hinted here the idea of with program rules based on the option of the option set, assign the value. So uh, maybe this is what you are thinking. And, uh, and you will need uh, many program rules if it's about many locations. So that can have an issue in performance, but uh, I would explore. Huh? I think it's a very smart option. But you may need one program rule to link each value in the option set with the coordinate you want to assign. But why not? Over. Okay. Also, uh, please excuse us. There are some issues with the server. Uh, we know you're having synchronization issues. It's, um, it's okay to report, but we are aware. Um, we are we're working on it to see what's going on. Uh, we will fix this issue and we will let you know. So in case you want to report, it's okay, but you don't need to tell us every time there's a sync issue. We are aware of it. So we will let you know once it's uh, properly working. Thanks. Yeah, uh, you can, you should be able to do the exercise anyway, because the problem is like when posting, not when you can create, because for creating a TI, it's not, It is not an issue now. It's only when sending the TI to the server. So. There was a question from Milton as well, 
was saying, I'm seeing two coordinates entities. So when he's trying to register, I think Jose, you explained this, but maybe it's worth to go again through it. So whenever someone wants to enroll a person, it says the coordinates of the person and the enrollment coordinates. And he has posted a picture on, on Slack, but I think it's when you explained that there's coordinates assigned both to the TI and to the enrollment. Okay, so yes, then let me again share the screen. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, okay, yeah. So, um, yes, so you can like define like a coordinate that are at the track identity type level, okay, or the, or the, or the enrollment level, okay. So normally if you have both, it's going to be weird because in the same screen for data entry, you're going to have both fields, once, one, one after the other, right? So, um, so for example, in the track entity type, uh, here the person, okay, with the feature type of the person is point, okay? This means that uh, whenever I am collecting data, okay, it will show up this, this in the, when you're creating a new TI, it will show this field here, coordinates for the person, okay? Latitude and longitude. So if we also have in my program, if we also have the, the, the in the enrollment for the program, if we also have, now has changed to point again. Someone is changing this to point because I just remove it. <laughs> I don't know. So if we have also here the feature type as point, okay, then what is going to happen is that it will display also this over here. You will have the, this text, enrollment coordinates all together. So you will have in the same screen, enrollment coordinates and the coordinates for the person, okay? So we normally only need one, okay? So that's the reason because I am trying to remove this here, but it seems I don't know what is not being saved. Let me check. Okay, now it's away. Okay, now, now you sync with the meta again, you will see that the, the, the enrollment coordinates will disappear. Okay, you normally only need one. There are no difference in the in the Android application if you use the track identity type coordinates or the or the enrollment coordinates. So far, there are no difference. This may have an impact then in the analytics because the analytics in the server side is different if you have something defined as a track identity instance level, track identity, sorry, track identity type level, because then you can have the track identity instance enrolled in many other programs, or if it is an enrollment program, it is, the connection is linked to enrollment program, so it is only to, going to show only the, 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 in the map, only the TIs that are enrolled in, in that particular program. Okay, so this is, doesn't matter in much in the, in the, in the Android application, but it matters for the analysis in the server. I think uh, it's break time. Maybe, maybe I can go, I don't know if we have, no, because no one can, can sync to the server, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I would suggest that we, we take the, the, because we're, we can take 10 minutes break. This break is the longest, it's 15, but let's show it to, 10 minutes. Okay. According to the agenda, you should be back at 12.15, so in 10 minutes. And then we will have the session of aggregate data, uh, who's going to be facilitated by Marta. And in the meanwhile, we're going to be working on the server. Don't worry, you can do the exercises because as Jose said, you don't need to sync. So you can do the exercises on local and we will let you know once the server is uh, fully performing. You can do it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So your so we are a stage. Okay, so welcome back, everyone. Um, I hope you are finding interesting the sessions uh, for today. I'm seeing a lot of questions in the chat that I hope can wait till our uh, questions and answer session at one in 40 minutes. We will try to go through the chat and make sure we don't leave any there. But now we need to change the topic of it and talk about data sets and validation rules in the Android app. This is the first academy that we make with uh, data sets, Jose and Jaime, by the way, I realized we didn't have them last year. And, uh, and it's going to be 
a very simple session again. My two sessions today are simple, where we just want to explain you uh, how the data sets translate into the app. So as we said the first day, data set aggregated model is just integrated with the other models as, a, as a, with the look of an activity list. This is what we call an activity list. So the way we identify the data sets is because they have the data sets word, yeah, easy, right? In the, in the list. Um, same access principles, uh, capture or unit sharing settings according to, to how the server is configured with view only or capture and view permissions. So it will just read the configuration of your server and icons and colors also apply to data sets. So you can configure the colors and the icons for your data sets. So <clears throat> I showed you this uh, on the demo the other day, uh, <clears throat> but uh, just to, yeah, go through it again, uh, the sections on your data sets will be rendered as tabs. And then uh, the tables for each section will put will be displayed one after the other on each tab. So you navigate the tabs horizontally, you navigate the, the, the tables inside the tabs or the sections vertically. And then if you swipe right or left on the header, you are gonna change sections. But if you swipe here, you're gonna be navigating the form. We will see this in the demo in a minute. And you can adjust the width of the column. You are not seeing this in the current tab. We lost it in the last version. That was a mistake. And we have added it for the next one. But ideally, or in theory, you can adjust the width. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought it was in <laughs> You can adjust the width of the column for whatever makes sense. The text will always be complete. So it will be longer. Height, the height will be bigger if, uh, if you make it smaller. And uh, yeah, and I think that's uh, that's the only thing. It's, it's quite simple. We render as a table and, and then the fields are there and you can have as many combinations, category combinations as, as you define in your DHIS to set. Um, we have a details tab as uh, in the events or in the track entities. So in details, we usually show the status. In this case, uh, a data set can only be either complete or open. We show the period. This data set is daily. That's why the period is a day. And then the org unit, the capturing org unit. And to reopen a data set, if you have permissions, then you have to go to the three vertical dots menu on the top right corner and reopen. So validation rules. So that's how the data sets display in the app. And the validation rules are also supported. You don't need to do anything special for your validation rules to run in Android. As long as you have them configured in the server, they will be executed in the app. Uh, we just want to, to make you aware of which fields are we picking and displaying in the app. So we are showing two fields, the description, and then the instructions. So the text that you enter there will be displayed. So we encourage you to, to use user-friendly text and action-oriented text that will help your users solve the error that they are seeing. In this case, in the instruction, we are saying, please review your numbers in the case tasted and hospitalized tab. So we are telling them where to go and check the numbers. And then below, you always find the data to review and the values. The description can also be descript descriptive, no, but helping understand what's the problem. So the number of patients hospitalized cannot be higher than the number of patients tested. All admitted patients should be tested. So that helps them understand, okay, I have two tested, three hospitalized, that must be a mistake. Uh, so, so that's how the validation rules work. And as you might know, uh, validation rules can be mandatory or not based on how you configure the data set. So you can say complete only if validation validation passes. If you tick that, the user cannot complete the data set without 
having a successful execution of the validation rules. If you don't tick that, the validation rules are optional and then the user decides if they want to run them or not. So in the next slide, we have tried to explain you the two flows. Um, we, we think this can be useful for you as a reference in the future. But uh, this is the, this is the, 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 the parameter in the data set. So if you don't tick complete allowed only validation passes, then it means the execution is optional. So when the user saves, we will say, okay, this is saved. Do you want to check data quality? So the user can say yes or no. So if the user says no, or if the user says yes, but everything is good, then we go to the final screen where we ask the user if they also want to complete the data set. No matter if they say yes or no, if it's yes and it's correct, or if they say no, we allow to complete if there is no error. Now, if the user says yes, but there is an error, we explain the error, but the user can still complete because it's not mandatory. And then the user can either decide to fix and start over or just com exit without complete, complete and exit uh, without uh, solving or fixing the error. Now, if you tick in complete allowed if only validation passes, then when the user saves, we run the validation rules automatically and we show the result directly. So if everything is correct, we come straight here and we ask, do you also want to complete? If they say no, we save without completion. If they say yes, the data set is completed. However, if there is an error, we show the error, but now we don't offer the possibility to complete anyway. The user has to go back, fix the error, save again. So this is based on your requirements and, and the use case. Uh, that you can choose if you want to make it mandatory or not. Um, and then completion. So I think we can directly move to the app. Well, maybe. And I want to show the form. So let's make a small demo, which will be also illustrative for the exercise. Uh, yes. So. Mm -hmm. So this is our data set. Oh, we, yeah. In this case, why are we playing with the server? Uh, Jose or Jaime, can you check while I do the demo with another user that hopefully works? Uh, yes, if the participants uh, yeah, can enter values because the exercise. Uh, yes, uh, one, one thing that I wanted to, to mention is that uh, we have changed something in the server. So before you can do anything and for those that we're having issues, please do a synchronization before you do this exercise. Like this, you, you have the latest configuration, the errors that you were reporting were, should be fixed. And I'm gonna check at the same time with Immortal. Let's see if I can with my user, which is supposed to be super user. <clears throat> this user has the whole hierarchy, so it will probably take a while. But meanwhile, I think what we can do is we can explore the validation rules. So this is the validation rule that we will be using, all of us. Number of hospitalized cannot be higher than number of tested. Again, here the description and the instruction, these two fields will be displayed. And then uh, we have left side, right side. So in this case, 
I, I just did it and it's uh, it's working for me fine with the mobile user. With the mobile user? Yeah. Hmm. So you have record, mobile. you enter the data set, uh, uh, you register the data set, right? Yeah, uh, yes, it is. Okay. So when I try to register, I got the error. So if at one point you want me to share the screen and you can. You got the error? Ah, the error, yeah. Okay. The validation, yeah, yeah. So if you if if your phone is taking long, if you want me, I can share my screen and you direct me what to do. Okay, I think what I want to do is let's try once with the other user and and if not, we use yours. Sorry about this. You all know the HIS too. <laughs> we are touching this server. We are many people. So AC mobile zero zero one. And meanwhile, we explore the, the, the validation rule. So this is the validation rule we are going to be using. And then the option set, uh, sorry, the data set is the daily one. And for now, it's not mandatory. Uh, the execution is not mandatory. And it's assigned to all our units, so you will all be able to enter data. Okay, I'm not going to play now with anything. <laughs> yeah, this is taking too long. Marta, do you want me to share? And to use yeah, my screen? Yeah, I think so. Oh, wait, coming, coming. Okay. Okay, so let's try again. I think I opened the wrong one before. <laughs> okay, so this is this is probably the one that Jaime registered. I don't know. So this is how the list of data sets work. I'm going to enter a new one. This is what you will have to do in the exercise. I'm going to enter data for today in my unit. So you will all have to enter data in your unit. You will not see the data that we are entering now because you are in a different unit. So I think we were wanting to work on this number of uh, cases tested or hospitalized. Here is how you the others, I cannot adjust this now, but this would be a very good example for making this column smaller. So I want to force the error of the validation rule. So we know that if I have uh, more cases hospitalized than tested, uh, it, the error should uh, be triggered. Uh, we check the configuration. Remember, it's not mandatory. So the app is going to ask me, do you want to check data quality? So I'm going to say yes. And it's telling me, hey, you have one error. OK. So this is as we see here, the description and the instruction. And here, the, the data elements that are not correct. So if we fix this now and save again. Yes, I want to check data quality and now everything looks good. Do you also want to complete? Yes. So this is my data set. Let's sync. Yes, thank you. So this is how they will be listed one after the other with the day and the old unit. Uh, the period and the other unit. So now let's go to our data set. And make the um, 
validation mandatory. So the user cannot complete if the validation does not happen. And why not? Let's put a color. So in the app, we have to sync to pick the changes on the data set. Again, I don't have notifications, so we have to look at this to know when the synchronization is complete. Must be still running. Did I click? Yes. No. I'm doubting now. Maybe I didn't go. Okay. The only difference now should be, well, the color, yes. <laughs> and uh, let's enter another one. One for yesterday, yesterday. So now I enter the same value. I'm gonna make the same mistake. So now when I save, it's not going to ask, it's gonna run automatically and then tell me that I have an error and I don't have the option to complete anyway, as I had before. So, oh, sorry, I didn't look well, so I fix it. It is saved and then everything looks good. I want to complete. And now here we are. I'm gonna think now from outside. So this is all uh, I had for content and demo. So the exercise is as simple as the presentation. Hopefully you will have time to catch up with your previous exercises as well. So you have more than 15 minutes, 17. What we would like you to do is to open this same uh, data set and uh, enforce an error. So enter values. Right now it's mandatory, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the validation, because it's the last configuration we did. So, well, it depends on when you sync your metadata, but in any case, the, the, what we are asking for will work anyway, even if you don't sync your metadata. So you need to force an error to see the error message of the validation rules and then fix the error and complete. And what we would like you to submit is one screenshot of the data set entry screen with the wrong values. So showing the error message and then one screenshot of the data set showing the everything looks good message after you fix the error. So that's it, please. Share your doubts in the in the Slack channel. We will prioritize the questions about uh, data sets and validation rules for for this time. Thank you. Thanks, Marta. We have a question from Avigari, mm -hmm. who says, "Hi, Marta. Is it possible to flag the value immediately after it is entered? So, as opposed to doing the data quality check, that is that the cell uh, with the wrong value changed to red, for example." Yeah, no, uh, we don't have that. Uh, no, we don't have that. The validation rules, uh, we are kind of replicating the way it works in uh, DHIS2. Other kind of validations like a type, value type validation might happen at the moment of data entry. But for the validation rules, we trigger them only when, when the value is, when the data set is saved. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. So I think that answers your question. We have another one from Patrick Omiel who says, I mean, it's more a wish. He says, I wish the rendering for aggregated is adjustable to allow one entry field on a screen. The tabular view is good, but some users have issues with the keyboard. Yeah, so this, Patrick, uh, thank you for the question. It would be like a list because that was the, the case in the, in the previous app, for instance. Um, let me share this again. In the previous capture app for data sets, we had like, I'm gonna pick a simple table. Let's say this one, we have one, two, three, four. Wow, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in this case, it would be eight rows. One with suspected cases imported, suspected cases known clusters, suspected cases community transmission. If that is what you mean, we actually, the HIS2 Android app was like that. And the request was to make it tabular. So, so now we have it tabular and we don't have the other one. But we do have the Jira ticket uh, because it was already mentioned in a, in a demo. So ideally, when, when we have space for it, um, we, we should be able to offer a, the possibility to configure, probably in the data set or at user level, the display, uh, let's say, listing data entry. But it was not very well received before because it was like, imagine a morbidity table with uh, five uh, age groups. So each morbidity was listed five times. And then if it's five age groups plus gender plus sex, then it would be 10 lines per morbidity. So the, the so it's, it's a, yeah, I guess it's a matter of the use case or the setting or even the preferences of the user. So, it's, it could come in the future, but this is not there now. It's not prioritized, to be honest, to the next version. But it's not out of uh, the long-term roadmap. Maybe you want to do this with the phone to show and sure use the tablet is. and and. I'm not sure if, it, if in the phone. Ah oh, yes, Mira, don't So I I know it's not ideal, but. Uh, but the problem and the reason why I don't do this is that the keyboard takes yeah, most of the screen. all the screen when you open it and actually it's not opening right now. It's not opening probably because it's calculating. Is it opening for you in the tablet? It's probably calculating that it's going to take the whole screen. So. Okay, yeah, no, for me, it's, I mean, I know it's not ideal, but in the tablet, uh, it, it looks quite, quite well. Yeah. Not sure about the second screenshot of the data set exercise. So the first screenshot is, uh, So the first screenshot would be this, and the second screenshot would be this, where we say everything looks good. It's just, uh, I, we just want you to go through the flow, through the validation. We just finished evaluating the submissions for exercise one this morning. For the ones that were submitted, again, they were about 50 something. So we are missing still a lot.
but they were very good in general. The, uh, uh, going back to Jose, I'm not able to set the relationship. Please help. Yes, I could suggest that we still keep keep this time for the aggregate, no, if we can, and then we we mm -hmm. answer these kind of questions in the next hour, if possible. Yeah. 